Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Sports Exchange. My name is Scott Morgan, Roth, Motor City, Mad Mouth. Glad to have Rick Curdy. Welcome back, Rick. Hey, guys. How are you? All right. And we uh, have our resident running back, Mel Farr, Jr. How, good evening, Mel. Good evening, guys. How's everybody doing? We're doing all right. Ready to talk some football tonight? After all, it is championship week. I'm ready. All right. But before we do that, we're going to talk about some news first. The Detroit Lions have hired... Dan Campbell, the, Campbell, the assistant head coach of the New Orleans Saints, as well as a tight ends coach, he gets a six-year deal to try to get the Lions situation right. Mel Farr, some thoughts about the Dan Campbell hiring. Well, I was surprised when I heard it because uh, he wasn't on my radar. I hadn't heard anybody speak of Dan Campbell and, and the Detroit Lions and putting those two together. Uh, like I said, I think we talked off the air last week. They had a conference call with Chris Spielman did a Zoom call with some of the older players who guys who played the former players. And he had assured them that they would, they would see the Lions win a Super Bowl in their lifetime. So I felt pretty good about that. Then the hire, and I was kind of like, mm, but again, I wasn't in any of the interviews. So I don't know how, how he interviewed with the team, but obviously you know, I think if you look at the hires that are going on around the league right now, one thing that you notice is that everybody's really going younger. And I think what they're looking for, the Lions is look, really looking for a leader of men, not necessarily the next best coordinator, the guy who can draw plays the best and do all, do all that, because that, ne- that doesn't necessarily mean that he's a great leader of men, that he's going to be a great head coach. Um, so, I'm, you know, I'm willing to give the guy, you know, a shot. I mean, what do we have to lose here? I mean, we have no choice, really, but – uh, and I know he had an opportunity as an interim coach in Miami. Right. I believe he went five and seven. Correct. And, I, and you know, if my memory serves correctly, I think the guy really kind of liked him and we're, we're, we're kind of pushing for him to get the head gig. But, you know, for whatever reason, it's hard sometimes as an interim coach to get that head gig. But, uh, um, you know, I'm willing to give, a, give him a try. And, you know, it's, like I said, it seemed like they wanted him to be the guy. And, uh, maybe he's a, a you know see, he's going to be a great leader of men. He got a, a heck of a contract, a six year deal, so he's going to have an opportunity to put his program in place, and, and we'll we'll see what happens. Correct. Yeah, I was kind of like a eh kind of higher, and I was kind of like, oh, wasn't he the interim coach with the Dolphins, and and wasn't he like one of these tough as nails kind of guy, and did these hard practices, and I was just kind of like eh. You know, that's how I feel about it. I think it's okay. We'll see what happens. Um, it's interesting they signed him to a six-year deal, so they're kind of showing that it's a mess here. So you have time to fix this mess. Well, so, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. I thought they were going to go with Salia, uh, who's the ne- new coach of the – um, Soleil, right. The guy that, yeah, yeah, Soleil. I thought he's a Michigan guy. They like the Michigan guys. Um, and I've heard a lot of great things about him. He was, he's been on the radar for the last two seasons. I thought they would go with him. Um, so I'm kind of a little surprised by Campbell. He just really, uh, uh, kind of came out of nowhere, but, um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. You know, Robert Soleil, I believe they wanted him, but when New York felt that he, uh, if he got out of that building, he, he, he could have landed the Lions gig. I do believe that. So New York figured we better close the deal. They targeted their guy and they were able to get Robert Soleil. Uh, I actually like the hiring of Dan Campbell. He's been in the game for 20 years. And yes, to back up your point, Mel, the Dolphins players did want him here. So he definitely had the momentum and the uh, endorsement of them, but they decided to go in a different direction. But you know what? It's just as well that he's going back to Detroit play there he's got 20 years under his belt a younger guy you know so the only older guy that's been hired is Urban Meyer for the Jacksonville Jaguars we'll get into that maybe a little bit later in the broadcast but you know other than that there's a certain trend going that they're not looking to bring in a lot of retreads but indeed they're looking to try to get some fresh blood so I have no problem with the Dan Campbell hiring the fact that the matter is is I do like the six-year deal so they're willing to show a commitment toward him and the Brad Holmes hire, I think you might have a pretty good uh, working relationship between the two guys. All right, well, we'll go from Dan Campbell to Philip Rivers, who's retired from the National Football League, 17 years. 
He's had 242 consecutive starts, eight Pro Bowls, fifth in passing yards all time to 63,440, and fifth all time in touchdowns, 421. Mel, I'll let you lead it off. Is he a Hall of Famer? That's a great question. You know, Philip Rivers is. I try all... to ask great questions, Mel. Yeah, I mean, he's always going to be tied to uh, to Eli Manning because of that trade that happened on, on right. draft day. And, right. And you look at uh, not, and you look at Philip's career, and you say, well, maybe that's why Archie didn't want Eli to go to San Diego <clears throat> because you know, Philip has never uh, made it to a Super Bowl, and obviously uh, Eli has gone to two and one two. Right. Uh, so. You know, it looks like I, you know, it looks like Eli got the better end of that deal. He put up great numbers. There's no question about that. I think he's fifth in in yards. I think he's fifth in touchdowns. So, when you put up those kind of numbers, you're going to get Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame consideration. And uh, he's more than likely definitely going to, you know, I, I, you know he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Well, well that's exactly Hall right. He, uh, Archie Manning and Eli Manning did orchestrate that trade to go to New York and they didn't want to be there. So they made the best thing that they could do with the Chargers at the time. Uh, Eli goes to New York. You can see how that worked out. Got a couple of Super Bowls. Philip Rivers had a really good career with the Chargers and to wrap it up, he had, went out with the Colts into the playoffs and then he knew it was time to get away. So it was one of those win-win trades for both teams, even though the Giants got the Super Bowls. But why not? If you can trade two quarterbacks in the top five for one another and they both have outstanding careers, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen in football, right, Rick? Right. You know, um, congrats to Phillip Rivers. He's had a great career. Uh, to me, this is a no-brainer. Of course, he's going to go to the Hall of Fame. I mean, people are going to say, well, he never won a Super Bowl. Well, Dan Marino didn't win a Super Bowl. Dan Fouts, he didn't even go to a Super Bowl. I right. compare him to Dan Fouts. And ironically enough, they played for the Chargers. Uh, the San Diego Chargers, not the LA Chargers. So right. um, to me, he's a Hall of Famer. Will he get in the first ballot? Um, I think probably the second time we'll get around because people are going to throw that that whole, well, you know, part of the whole Eli Manning and look what Eli did. And I mean, they, they need to stop that. He's, he's, he's a great quarterback. He's up there with touchdowns, yards, everything. He had a long career, successful career. Um, and um, he's going to the Hall of Fame. To me, it's just, it's a no-brainer to me. So um, but congrats on, 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 um, on his career. He had a really spectacular career. So, um, and it was funny, I think in his press conference, he said that he was going to retire. So he, him and his wife could start a family <laughs> they have nine kids. So <laughs> I that was well, kind of the funny. thing about, the thing about Philip Rivers is not only a fine quarterback, a really great quarterback. He's a good person. He really is. So, yeah. you know, you'd like to think that nice people, good people, uh, get rewarded. Well, he's had nine kids and a fine career. You know what? Uh, I'm, I'm really happy for him. I hope that he gets whatever he's looking for, that he's really happy. So more power to Philip Rivers. And like I said, Mel, you mentioned it before, that Eli Manning for Philip Rivers trade is kind of a win-win for both sides. You know, if Philip Rivers is a consolation prize, I've seen teams fare a lot worse than that. That's for sure. You know, not every great quarterback gets to a Super Bowl or they may get there once, but to have a celebrated career, making a lot of money, doing what you like to do, playing the game you really love. And from what I hear, he's going to be a high school football coach. So that suits him fine. The main thing is get out at the right time. So you don't have to have injuries that will ultimately, you'll have to deal with down the road. You want to get out of there as healthy as you can. And unfortunately, sometimes guys tend to stay a little bit too long. All right, well, let's continue on here. The NFLPA Executive Director DeMora Smith says the upcoming offseason will be virtual again due to COVID-19 pandemic. Probably the worst kept streak on the planet, right? Planet, Rick. Yeah, you know, um, you know, they're going to do what they can to get the season in. And, I mean, it's, we'll just have to see what happens. You know, we, we have a new president now, and it seems like he wants to take things more seriously now and uh, really, really attack this. And we just got to get back to normalcy. You know, this is, you know, it's just having games canceled, having teams uh, testing positive for COVID. And, uh, you know, people just want to get back to normalcy. So hopefully uh, 2021 will be a, a, a much better season than a uh, year than 2020. So um, it's just going to take time. People need to be patient. Just mask up. You know, people still don't want to wear masks or still want to go party. So people need to... We, you know, people have to do their part as well, you know, and, and just and uh, hopefully we get better um, distribution with this vaccine. So, um, you know, we, we just got to get back to normalcy. 
Well, the virtual thing worked out pretty well last year anyways. Everybody thought the virtual thing was going to be a problem with OTAs. You know what? It'll work out again. At some point, they'll go back to OTAs you never, and exhibition games. But right now, you know, it did work out. So if you do it another year, it's not the worst thing that can happen, right, Mel? No, it's not the worst thing Worst thing that can happen. They were able to adapt last year, and, and you know, things worked out okay. Uh, I think the tackling wasn't all that great. Um, but, you know, tackling has been going down. It's been a lost art for, for a number of years now. But you know, obviously, you know, they're trying to get in the season and, you know, depending on what happens, how, how soon and or how quickly we can get this vaccine out, uh, we'll determine how soon we can get our lives back to normal here. Very true. All right, well, let's go on to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They signed former Washington football team quarterback Dwayne Haskins to a futures contract. Obviously, the Steelers are reacting and using Haskins as an insurance policy with Ben Roethlisberger, who's 38 years old. So, Mel, how do you think the Dwayne Haskins will mix with Mike Tomlin? If you can't play for Mike Tomlin, there's a big problem. And I, I'm happy for Dwayne Haskins that he'll get a fresh start with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't think there's any organization that he could have fared better with than the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right, Mel? Yeah, I mean, God bless Mike Tomlin. Obviously, they think pretty a lot of him to drop this in his lap, I mean, but he's dealt with Le'Veon Bell and he's dealt, dealt with Antonio Brown and he's also dealt with Ben Roth Roethlisberger, the diva that he is. So he's been able to manage personalities. Hopefully right. he'll be able to get the best out of this kid. Obviously, you know, I've heard every, everything I've heard is, you know, the guy's got great arm talent. That's not the issue. It's about getting him to focus and, and to commit to playing football. And maybe Mike Tomlin will be the one that can, that can reach this kid and help him resurrect his career. But again, you know, a lot of it, a lot of this is up to the kid. You know, Mike Tomlin can only do so much. He can take the horse with water, but he can't make him drink. So right. you know, he, he can, you know, show him the way to the promised land. But I mean, he's got to buy into it. So hopefully, you know, what what the, the the what he felt in losing his his profession and in Washington when he lost his job, something that he probably never thought was going to happen. I mean, you know, he's never had to deal with this type of adversity. I mean, he's probably he's dealt with some adversity in life, obviously going through college and, you know, he's probably had to deal with some adversity, but nothing like this here. So hopefully he's got a chip on his shoulder and he's willing to go out there and work and put in the work and, and prove that uh, he can play in this league because now he's in a different situation now, you know, as a number one draft pick that he was, he was in a position where, you know, they give you a lot, they give you a lot of time to prove that you can't play. Right. Uh, when you're, when you're a street free agent and you come in, it, you know, they don't give you too many, too many chances to prove that you can play. You get a few chances to prove that you can play, but you get a whole lot of chances when you're a high draft pick like that to prove that you can't play. Because obviously, the the organization they don't want to look bad. They don't want to you know say that they made a mistake. They don't want to own up to the fact that, that they may have made a mistake. True. Yeah. So I'm with you all the way. You can't resurrect your career with Mike Tomlin. Shame on you. So I'm happy for Dwayne Haskins. Rick, some thoughts about this? Yeah, I'm I'm really shocked that some team got him right away. You know, um, to me, he's another Jamarcus Russell. That's the way I look at him. I think he's just a guy that's not going to learn. He's incredibly immature. He does stupid things. The guy, you know, you, you just had a horrible loss. And how do you cope with it? You go to a strip club. I mean, it's just like he needs to grow up. And apparently he had these kind of issues also at Ohio State as well. So, I mean, I just don't see it happening. I'm surprised that the Steelers are going to take a chance at him. I know he was visiting the Panthers. I was like, please, Panthers, don't get him. So I don't see much hope with him. Um, I, to me, just another Jamarcus Russell. He's just a guy that's just not going to grow up. And uh, if he can't make it with the Steelers and listen to Tomlin, um, he's done in the NFL. Yeah, no argument there for sure. If you can't make it with Mike Tomlin, shame on him. So I'll, I'll give you that one right for sure. All right, one, one, one last news note I want to get to before we talk about a couple of football games. The Jacksonville, Jacksonville Jaguars are hiring Daryl Bevel uh, as offensive coordinator. I thought he did a pretty good job with, as the interim Lions coach. You know, even though he went one and four, he had them playing hard and they were very competitive. He'll join Urban Meyer's staff. Well, I used to, I enjoyed Daryl Bevel's transcripts coming down from the pipeline up in Detroit. So it'll be neat that he's joining me in Florida anyways. I don't know if I ever get a chance to talk to him about it, but I think that's a pretty good hire for Jacksonville. And Urban Meyer is, is proving that he's getting some really good proven 
coaches here. I know Scott Linehan was the guy that they were looking at, but when Daryl Bevel came into the picture, I think this was a good hire to bring in Daryl Bevel as the offensive coordinator. Rick, why don't you lead off with this one, please? Yeah, I love what Jacksonville is doing. You know, we're being uh, kind of like, uh, you know, kind of tough on the uh, Lions about Campbell. I love what Jacksonville is doing. You know, you got to get the big fish, and the big fish is Urban Meyer. He's been wanting to go to the NFL for a long time. Everywhere he goes, he wins. Everywhere. Bowling Green, Utah, Florida, Ohio State. And I think he'll be successful here. He's got a great staff. I know Charlie Strong uh, is uh, joining him as well. Right. I know they got uh, a new GM, uh, Trent Bulky, who was the former uh, GM for the 49ers. I love what Khan's doing. I think he's doing a great job. I like Bevel. He's a big name. He's been around, got experience. And, you know, I, I, I'm very happy for uh, – I love what Jacksonville's doing and the uh, excitement to get Trevor Lawrence, who's been like this projected prodigy, you know, for the last two years, who could be the next Peyton Manning, you know, they got, they'll have a face for their league. So I love everything that Jacksonville's doing. They're doing everything right. Just go out to the big fish and he wants 12 million a year. You give him the 12 million, you know, why not? So uh, it's a great hire. And I love what Jacksonville's doing. For some crazy reason or another, and I don't know why, I had a gut feeling that Trent Balky was going to get that general manager job. But the Jaguars had to obviously go through the hiring process with the Rooney rule and look at every qualified candidate that there was. So, But I did believe, but I did have a feeling that Trent Balky was calling the shots during that interim period until now he gets a job full time and now he's working with Meyer. So I'm with you all the way. I think that Balky hires a home run. I love the Daryl Bevel. Hiring, of course, Urban Meyer, like you say, he's won everywhere on the planet anyways. So, Mel, all right, so let's talk about Daryl Bevel, Mel. I was surprised, actually. I actually thought that he would hire Tom Herman and that he would come with him over there because that was his offer of the at Ohio State before he took the Houston job. So I was kind of surprised by that. But um, uh, I'm sorry, Mel, you were uh, cutting out. Who, were, uh, who, who did you mention that you were surprised with the hire? I thought I thought that Tom Herman. I thought we would have. Oh, hired Tom him. Herman. Okay, that's All what right. I thought he probably would have hired. But uh, uh, so I was kind of surprised. I'll be honest with you. I was a little bit surprised by it, but I'm not shocked by it. Daryl, you know, Daryl Bevel. He's you know, him. I, I never put him and Urban Meyer together. So that just that that's I guess kind of shocking thing about it. But Daryl Bevel, you know, he's about 50, 51 years old. So I mean, he's not extra young. He's not too old. I'm just thinking about what I saw with the Lions offensively. I wasn't impressed. I don't know if that's because of personnel or if that's play calling. I don't know what it is. I guess we'll find out. I do believe it was personnel, running attack. And remember, as an interim coach, you only inherit what you have. It's not but like he was offensive the coordinator there, though. He was I, I know that. He's the offensive coordinator, but he didn't pick the groceries, pal. All he did was just toward, trying to coordinate him. I understand where you're coming from. He's an offensive coordinator for Matt. As, as an offensive coordinator, he has some input on what players make the roster so that he can run his offense. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I often wonder, and this is just my personal opinion, Mel, how much input he had with Beavis and Butthead, uh, a.k.a. Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia there, about how much input you have with that. When you had those two guys, you had two prunes running the show, and all he does is inherit a, uh, a, a situation where he had to make the best out of it. So I understand. The Tom Herman one's interesting. I think what it came down to was – he wanted an NFL coach over a college coach. And I know there was talk about Scott Linehan, but in the end, I think the Daryl Bevel hire will probably be better anyways. Again, when we're talking an interim guy, Mel, you know this as well as I do, having been around. You know, as Gene Hackman would say in the movie Hoosiers, let's see what hand I've been dealt. That's what you're looking at, Mel. Let's see what hand I've been dealt. Well, Herbert Meyer has always been sort of an innovative kind of guy. I, just, I, I don't see that with Daryl Bevel. I thought he would have had a, a innovative type of offensive coordinator because he's been kind of innovative everywhere that he's been, and uh, you know he's more of an offensive kind of a guy, kind of a guy as well. So I, I that's why I just thought I was just really, really surprised by that hire. I just you know Urban Meyer, obviously you know he's he's a great leader of men. Mm -hmm. And that includes, you know, his, his coaching staff as well. So maybe he'll be able to get, you know, something out of Daryl Bevel that, you know, nobody else has been able to get out of him. 
Well, before Bevel was mentioned, Scott Linehan was a possible person as well. But in the end, Daryl Bevel uh, became available. And the only reason why I think he held out long enough is because he was interviewing for the Lions job until they decided on Dan Campbell. That's when Urban Myers snapped him up. But otherwise, that's why you hadn't heard about him up until now. Remember, these coaching, you talk about head coaching jobs being filled. These assistants and these experienced ones are being snapped up pretty quick, too. And if you're a young coach or first-year coach in the league, you want to get as many experienced coaches around you to, to fill out your staff. And I think that's what you're beginning to see sure. in this wave. So, all right, now that we've talked about the news, let's talk about the uh, two football games and, and the rematches that have occurred. We're going to lead it off with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Green Bay Packers. We'll recap their first matchup on Sunday, October 18, 2020, the Tampa Bay Bucks. We all thought this was a, the best game of the week. Shame on us. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers 38 and the Packers 10. In Tampa, Aaron Rodgers had an awful night, 16 of 3,560 yards, two interceptions, and he got sacked four times. And Tom Brady didn't have the greatest statistical night, but it was good enough for 17 of 2,766 yards. Uh, yards and two touchdowns. So let's talk about the initial matchup, Rick, and then we'll get to the prediction afterwards. And then Mel, of course, you're going to follow Rick. Go ahead. Yeah, I thought the first game was going to be like this great game and it was a complete blowout by Tampa Bay. Both teams are just changed dramatically. I had Green Bay as one of these teams that they play really good against the bad teams, but when they play the good teams, they don't do very well. They're on a roll right now. Rodgers is playing out of his mind, and I'll be shocked that he's not the NFL MVP. Brady and the Buccaneers were so, you know, like Jekyll and Hyde. They do really well, and then they would play bad. Brady looked great, and then he looked old. Now he's on a roll. Um, him and Antonio Brown, Krakowski is getting involved now. They look like they're peaking at the right time. So both teams are peaking at the right time. But um, it's Lambeau Field. It's cold out there. I know Brady played in New England and went to Michigan, but I can't go against Aaron Rodgers and uh, and the Packers. And I, I like the Packers in this one. Give me a score. Um, I would say um, I would say 28-21. Okay. Uh, so Mel, size up the first game. Obviously, we know it was a pretty one-sided twenty-eight point differentials at Raymond James Stadium where it was a whole lot warmer than what we're about to get in Lambeau. So summarize what your interpretation was of the first game between the two squads, Mel, and then we'll get into your prediction. Yeah, I think everybody thought we were going to see a much better uh, ball game than we saw. And, 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 you know, you're looking at Green Bay right now. They're they're red hot. I mean, they are they are clicking on all cylinders right now. I mean, uh, the running game, uh, the throwing game, and then defensively with the with the Smith brothers uh, putting the pressure on the quarterback, they 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 look unbeatable right now. And so, if I were, you know, if I wasn't, I've always been I've been a Tampa Bay fan since Doug Williams and and and, and uh, Ricky Ricky Bell and all those guys. You know, when they were playing down there, I've been a Tampa Bay fan for a long time. And you know, my my head says Green Bay. Looking at it and look how they've been playing as of late because they have been playing extremely well. My heart says. Uh, Tampa Bay because you know I want to see Tom Brady you know I want I want to see Tom Brady do well I mean I I like what he's done with his career and you know and the success that he's had I like to see Bruce Arians have an opportunity to go back uh, to the Super Bowl as a head coach um, and you see that you know they won decisively and if you watch the game that they played last week um, on third on, on third and short quite a few times they threw a deep ball. And if you and and it, and it wasn't complete, it was just a hair too long. There was one to Gronkowski on the up up the left sidelines, fourth and one. It, you know, it, the first down, second down, and it became third down, third and one. It's, they're just getting the ball, and it's third and one, and they throw a bomb. And then you had to kick. So if you go three and out against Green Bay, and you had too many of those, and you get behind by a few scores, it's going to be very difficult. To, to catch up because those guys, those those, those Smith brothers, when they, when they pin their ears back and, and get after the quarterback, they can get after the quarterback. So I think there's some things that Tampa Bay can clean up. Either they got to make those plays or they just got to be smart and let's just keep the chains moving. You know, third and one, hey, let's run the football. We got these two big old backs back here. Let's run the football. 
and and it'll just just keep uh, uh, you know as a uh, as a Kansas City coach you said keep matriculating the ball down the field let's just keep moving the ball down the field you know as long as Aaron Rodgers is on the bench he can't hurt us so what are we in a hurry for so I'm gonna pick Tampa Bay okay and, uh, I'm gonna pick Tampa Bay and I'm gonna pick them to win uh you know I, I think Tom Brady's motivated uh I'm a 28 28 17. Well, I like the fact that both of you two disagree, so I guess I'm the one who's supposed to break the tie, right? Right. This isn't this isn't like Congress or anything like that. I mean, <laughs> breaking the tie doesn't mean you win. Well, yeah, we're not gonna. I'm not gonna. It doesn't mean I'm gonna be right. It doesn't mean I'm right. I'm just gonna, right. Exactly. Right. But I gotta break the tie a little bit. So all right, yeah, I don't know what anything's like in Congress. So don't get me going there. But all right, not area. But uh, the uh, Green Bay Packers played for this game to get the best record to go to Lambeau Field. That's what they played for. And he Tom came, Brady can play in the cold. That's not a problem. I He's know that. But don't tell me the rest of them can. We know what Tom Brady can do. We know the, the former Michigan Wolverine did, and he played with the New England Patriots for a lot of years, okay? But the Green Bay Packers played for this moment to host that championship game at Lambeau Field. That's what they played for. Yes, they got blown out in Tampa. Maybe that was a wake-up call that they needed because they were reading too many headlines about how good they were. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers let them know how bad you were, you know. And then again, the Buccaneers can make you look very bad because they have a lot of weapons. And yes, they added Antonio Brown. And if Antonio Brown is a factor in this game, life can be a little bit difficult for the Packers, that's for sure, because he's blended in with Brady as well. But in the end, Lambeau Field, the frozen tundra, I'm going with the Green Bay Packers to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 35 to 21. Brady has a pretty good game. You know, he's worth two or three touchdowns one way or the other. But in the end, I believe the Packers are going to win 35 to 21. So, you know, Rick and I had the Packers. Mel, you have the Buccaneers. And next week, we're going to find out who's right, whether I'm breaking the tie or, or, or you're uh, breaking my chops. Something's going to be broken here. So uh, I didn't get into this game here to make predictions. And I don't want people going broke because of what I've got to say. Otherwise, I'll be like, the, the guy in talk radio, there'll be that movie talk radio. And I never talked movies before, but it didn't end well for the disc, for the disc jockey. But we'll get into that for the movie um, buffers out there. Final game to talk about is a re, uh, bear in mind that first game was in Tampa. They're going to be in Lambeau. The other game we have a rematch was at the Monday night game on October 19, 2020. Kansas City went into Buffalo to win 26-17. Patrick Mahomes, 21 of 26, 225 yards, two touchdowns. But the X factor in here was Clyde Edwards Hilaire, went 161 yards. Obviously, the uh, stage shifts over to Arrowhead Stadium. Mel, what's your uh, take on the Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills? Well, we had to see who's going to play quarterback, right? Um, Patrick Mahomes. No, no. You know, I mean, we all know Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes, he's probably, he, he could see three people, but. You know, if they ask him, he's fine, but he might be seeing double, quadruple, whatever. But I know he's going to do whatever he needs to do to get through the protocol to, to play. The other thing, I really didn't see where he got the, the funny thing about that play is I really didn't, I've, I've looked at it, I can't tell you how many different times I've looked at that play. I really, really didn't see where he got his head banged so hard where it would cause him to be, cause him to be concussed in the way, in the manner in which he was. You know, you get up and you're, you're you know, you're, you're unsteady. You know, usually that's from a big hit. And I just didn't see the hit. And, and I guess, you know, Andy Reid having them doing that speed option, obviously he probably won't be doing that anymore. So, uh, you know, as long as Patrick Mahomes is out there, I, I don't see the Buffalo Bills as great as, as the season as they've had. Right. They don't have what it takes to be able to keep up with Kansas City. And so I see, you know, as long as Patrick Holmes comes out there and he's himself and he's, you know, seeing single vision and he's, you know, seeing one right. person, uh, I, I, I pick the Chiefs to win. I think they'll, they'll win big, you know. They'll win probably like 35 to 17. Yeah, I was watching that hit. It looked like the impact of the hit mainly occurred when his head was hitting the ground right off the leg. But his head didn't hit the ground. His head never hit the ground. It kind of hit the other guy's helmet a little bit. It looked like he might have got choked out a little bit, but I really didn't see a, a definite impact on his head like you would normally see when you, 
when somebody gets up like that. Well, let's consider it this way. It was a very low collision, and it's a headache that Tylenol wasn't getting rid of, obviously. So, you know, and of course, if they need another quarterback, they'll just go to the University of Michigan and get it. And Chad Henney, who he didn't do it badly either. So, just had to throw the Michigan reference out there. Fine, I mean, but they're, 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 I mean, Chad Henney is not going to get him to the promised land. I'm kidding with you. I'm kidding with you. I am kidding with you. Once upon a time, a guy by the name of Drew Bledsoe did go to the, uh, you know, won the AFC championship game when Brady was hurt, and then uh, Brady finished the job, but that'll be for another show. Rick, what's your take on uh, the Kansas City Chiefs Buffalo Bills? <laughs> well, I think it'll be a pretty tight game in the first half. I think uh, Kansas City will run away with it. I think Kansas City will win like 37-21. Buffalo's had a great year. They've made a lot of progress, a lot of strides, but I don't. But I think this is Kansas City's year. They're, to me, they're just their offense is explosive, and um, Mahomes. I mean, he can have t- double, triple vision. He can have one leg, one arm. The man's incredible, and so I mean, he's going to play, and it doesn't matter. He's he's going to play. So um, I, and they're in Kansas City, and I just um. They want to prove to everybody that this wasn't a fluke, that they won the Super Bowl, you know, and they want to make it back to back. And um, like I said, I think it'll be like 37-21. Um, and I think they'll win it uh, in the second in the second half. I think it'll be close in the first half and then the second half to run away with it. So that's my prediction. And Mahomes will have a big game. Yeah, I got the game going 29-20 in favor of Kansas City. I think maybe the weather might keep it a little bit closer, but it's, it's better than seven, eight points. So I would say a nine-point win for Kansas City. And I guess what it comes down to is Rick and I are basically picking Kansas City and Green Bay in the Super Bowl. Well, Mel, it looks like you're looking at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Kansas City Chiefs pretty much. Yes, sir, on an island. Well, there you go. Well, you know what? We get to talk about this again next week and see who's eating crow. I don't know about that. I hate eating crow, but when it comes to making predictions, I usually don't have a little lot to say about it. But meanwhile, good broadcast tonight. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, as we get ready for championship weekend, uh, Mel, why don't you let everybody know how they can get a hold of you? Yeah, all the, diff- all the different social media, the things that our ex-president can't use, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram at Melfar Jr. And um, my email address is melfarjr at gmail.com. It's M E L F A R R J R at gmail.com. And then you can follow what we have going on in Detroit and here in Atlanta for the youth at melfar.org. Rick, go ahead. Uh, you can contact me on my website at www.charlottebats.com. Our email address is cltbatsbaseball at gmail.com. We're on Facebook at Charlotte MLB. We're also on there at Charlotte Bats Baseball. We're also on Instagram at Charlotte Bats. We're also on Twitter at Charlotte Bats Baseball. And I'm also on LinkedIn under Rick Curdy, C-U-R-T-I. And you can contact me on any of those uh, social media websites. Very good. In terms of getting a hold of us, you can do so on Twitter at Tribune South. It's at Tribune South. Facebook and Instagram, South Florida Tribune. Get them done. Our YouTube channel, South Florida Tribune. This is where this broadcast will be visually. So once again, please subscribe to the South Florida Tribune uh, YouTube channel. Our website www.southfloridatribune.com. What you'll find on there is you'll find our media uh, distribution partners. We have columnists as well as all the broadcasts are on there. A very good website. My wife, Candy, does a wonderful job keeping it together day in and day out. She works really tirelessly to keep it as current as possible. Now, obviously, this, you can find the broadcast. We obtained the rights of the WSFT network. So that's where this broadcast will be under. It will be that drop down as well. So the WSFT network. Now, the shows that we're going to be running uh, from this day forward will be No Limits, which is our national broadcast, for, uh, which is non-sports related material. We have the South Florida Tribune podcast, which is a local one. Area. And of course, the sports that you're listening to as well. Our email address is South Florida Tribune at gmail.com. You can reach us on LinkedIn. Um, myself at LinkedIn, Scott Morganroth. If you want to hear the audio version of the broadcast, you can do so on Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google, or wherever you get your podcast. So, Rick, why don't you let everybody give everybody the COVID message, please? Thank you. Well, you know, unfortunately, right now, I think we're at over 400,000 deaths. Um, 
the good news that we have a new administration that looks like they're going to be taking this more seriously than the previous one. Um, I just tell people, again, mask up, stay safe. I know it stinks. There's a lot of things I wanted to go do, uh, especially in South Carolina. Things are a little looser there. But at the same time, you know, my health is more important than anything else. But you just got to wear, wear your mask, social distance, stay away from crowds. We're, we're almost there. You know, we're waiting for vaccines to come. And it's just uh, it's just important. You know, it's like I said, it's it stinks. But I, I feel very, very confident that this year we're going to get back to some type of normalcy. I miss going to baseball games. You know, we got a lot of new teams here in North Carolina I want to go see. And hopefully I will this year. And I'm confident that I will. But during that time, you just got to mask up, be safe, and just uh, watch out for everyone, everyone else. I should point out that Rick does a really fine job uh, helping the South Florida Tribune with our social media department, making sure that all the content is distributed properly. So, Rick, for that, we always are thankful that you help us with it as well. So, meanwhile, guys, really enjoyed the broadcast, and I had some news in there. We'll see how our predictions play out next week. Uh, because obviously next week will be our Super Bowl predictions as well. So we'll get to championship week and go from there. But meanwhile, guys, once again, fine job this evening. And I'll be curious to see whether it'll be Tampa. I'll be thinking of you if Tampa does win this thing, Mel. Otherwise, I'm looking for the old convention Super Bowl, Super Bowl in Green Bay and Kansas City. Probably something that a lot of people would like to see. But you know what? Uh, by the time we hit the air next Thursday night, We'll have a pretty good idea what direction we're going in. So, meanwhile, on behalf of Mel Farr Jr. and Rick Curdy, my name is Scott Morgan Roth of Motor City Manmouth. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the Sports Exchange, and we will catch you another night. Take care, everybody, and good evening. <laughs>